How many times have you popped open a can of Chef Boyardee on a weekend afternoon or even after school? You may even still pick up a can at the store every so often, just in case you need a quick meal. Unlike the friendly but fictional food faces of Betty Crocker and Aunt Jemima, Chef Boyardee, that cheerful mustached Italian chef, was a real person. Hector Boyardee founded the company with his brothers in 1928, after the family immigrated from Italy to America. His story actually begins in 1897 in Northwest Italy. Young Hector quickly gravitated toward cooking. By age 11, he was working as an apprentice chef at a hotel in his hometown. Like many early 20th century Europeans, Boyardee made his way to America with his brothers, arriving in 1914. Hector had little trouble finding work. He joined the culinary staff at New York's Plaza Hotel, where the following year, he became the head chef. He began introducing Italian dishes into the predominantly French menu at the Plaza. He also earned work at the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia, where he oversaw catering for the wedding reception of President Woodrow Wilson. Eager to take the Italian concept further, Chef Boyardee's journey took him to Cleveland in 1924, where he opened his own restaurant, which was a huge success. Already known as Hector, instead of his Italian name, Ettore, he also agreed to Americanize his last name by spelling it phonetically rather than the Italian way, because everyone had trouble pronouncing it. It wasn't easy for him to make the change, and he was quoted as saying, Everyone is proud of his own family name but sacrifices are necessary for progress. With Chef Boyardee's pasta dishes quickly becoming the talk of the neighborhood, demand for his food grew. Customers began asking how they could make Italian cuisine at home. Chef Boyardee decided to start filling milk bottles with his sauce for his customers to take home, and eventually, he started charging for a takeaway service that included uncooked pasta, a bottle of sauce, and some cheese. It was a massive hit, and popularity only continued to grow. The takeout business got big enough that the family started thinking about selling their sauce on a larger scale. At a time when Italian food was not widely consumed, finding great ingredients for their growing operation was a challenge. Boyardee wanted a particular type of tomato for his sauce, and he found that it could be grown in Milton, Pennsylvania. The town had been hit hard by the Depression, and when he gathered a group of farmers together to ask if they would grow his tomatoes, it was the beginning of a change for the little town. The farmers were in, and Boyardee took over an abandoned mill to open his production facility. They even grew their own mushrooms right on the premises. The Chef Boyardee Food Company was born, launched by Hector and his brothers Paul and Mario. Its first product was a ready-to-heat spaghetti kit that was inspired by the products his restaurant customers used to ask him for. The kit contained uncooked pasta, a container of pre-grated cheese, and some of his sauce. So when did Chef Boyardee go from high-end meals for the entire family to a guilty pleasure in a can? Well, beginning in 1942, the Chef Boyardee plant in Milton, Pennsylvania began operating around the clock to keep up with production demands. When they weren't busy with production, Chef Boyardee's employees could be seen marching through the streets of Milton during patriotic parades that inspired wartime support. Banners that read, Keep em flying, keep em rolling, keep them well fed, conveyed the pride the employees took in their critical role. By the time the war was won in 1945, the efforts of everyone at Chef Boyardee had not gone unnoticed. In 1946, employees gathered for a celebration as Hector Boyardee was awarded the Gold Star, one of the highest honors a civilian can receive, 
in honor of the company's wartime efforts. Unfortunately, keeping those doors open 24 hours a day meant he needed to hire more people. Once the war ended and that kind of commitment wasn't necessary anymore, Boyardee was faced with a choice to lay off all the people he had hired or sell the company. In order to keep the employees who were hired for increased production during the war, Chef Boyardee made the difficult decision to sell the company. By this time, they were employing around 5,000 people and producing more than 250,000 cans a day. American Home Foods paid almost $6 million for the company. Even though Chef Boyardee wasn't in charge anymore, he did stay with the company as a spokesperson and as a consultant until 1978. Boyardee died in 1985 at the age of 87 years old. Today, you can head to the grocery store and choose from a whole line of Chef Boyardee products. Even though they are not all what Chef Boyardee had envisioned for the products with his name on it, it's still a substitute for those nights when there's no time to put something together from scratch.